Hello everybody, so today we've got a really exciting video planned for you and that is how to record the saxophone, one of my favourite things to do ever, really. So, it's been widely requested throughout our YouTube comments, so we thought we'd give the people what they want. Um, whilst we're on the topic of social media, our Instagram and TikTok page has been doing fantastic at this moment in time, it's really growing. So if you do want to get involved with all the wacky things that go on over there, give us a follow at sax.co.uk and we will see you there. So you might be wondering, why would I want to be recording the saxophone? Uh, there's many answers to this question. One of them might be you, you're producing your own music, you might need to lay down a saxophone solo. Others might be you are just generally practicing and you want to monitor yourself and hear how, how you sound. So. Um, my background is actually in music production and sound engineering. So I'm going to show you my preferred way of recording the saxophone, and then we're going to explore some alternative options if you want to do it cheaper and quicker. So starting off then, first thing I'm going to be thinking about is what microphone am I going to be using? How are we going to capture that source sound of the saxophone? Um, on this side here, we have got a Shure SM58, a very popular dynamic microphone, generally used for stage and like kind of live performances. These are great little tools, um, which you could probably pick up quite cheap on the secondhand market as well and be perfect for recording your saxophone at home. On the other side here, we've got a Neumann TLM 102, one of my favorite microphones. This is a condenser microphone. Um, you probably find this in quite a few studios that they're very popular, uh, industry standard level really. They're going to give you a more accurate sound. Um, there are many different options to choose from, but if you're going to be sticking for home use, you can pick yourself up a dynamic mic or a condenser microphone. <laughs> Moving on from capturing the source sound, we're going to be talking about transferring that audio or analog signal into digital data that your computer or software can recognize. And there's no better tool to do that with than an audio interface. Here in front of me, I've got a Focusrite Claret, and this is an interface that we use for pretty much all of our videos. Focusrite are brilliant because they do cater for people with a range of budgets and you, you can start really quite cheap or alternatively go into the more professional, the realms of professional sound recording uh, where you'll have better preamps and it's going to give you a better quality sound. The things that I look out for when I'm going to be buying a interface is, first of all, how many inputs would this thing have? Here we've got two, quite clearly you can see there, um, which is going to be more than enough for recording yourself or even a friend if you've had to do a duet. Second of all, there's something called phantom power and there's these two buttons here which is going to be taking charge of that. What phantom power is, is an extra surge of energy, specifically 48 volts and that is going to be used to power the condenser microphone we were talking about. So if you are going down the, the, the condenser route, make sure that the audio interface that you do buy does have phantom power. We've captured the audio signal, we've transferred the signal but we actually haven't recorded it into anything yet, it's, it's not there, it's just in thin air at the moment. So. What we need to do is get ourselves a digital audio workstation. And what that is, is fancy for um, recording software, basically. So our recommendations would be Cubase, Ableton, Pro Tools, or Logic, if you're using a Mac. If you are lucky enough to own a Mac, you will find that there is a built-in software called GarageBand, which is more than enough for you to get recording your saxophone for the first time, doing a bit of producing, you know, throwing a backing track on there and hearing yourself back. So bear in mind, once you've transferred that signal, where's it going and what digital audio workstation will you be using? We're almost ready to record, but one thing I will mention is you do need to pick yourself up some headphones. Um, they don't need to be expensive, but you need to have something that's going to be kind of going over your head nicely and are comfortable to wear because the last thing you want is going to be recording for hours on end and you've got something like an ear earphone just sticking in kind of making bruising the internals of your ear you don't need that this is called monitoring this whole process and it's called monitoring um, purely because you are listening in to what's going on 
two things you want to be looking for are making sure you're in tune to the music you're playing against. Um, if you've got it in your ear, some people like to play both or kind of one-off. Um, tuning, and the other one is looking for imperfections in the audio. Uh, so you could have like a hum or a, a cable, it might be making a funny noise. You want to be looking out for these things. The last thing you need is you've done a three and a half minute take, and you listen to it back and think, oh, what's that noise in the background? Um, of course, it goes without saying, you can't be recording whilst you've got the speakers playing the music that you're playing up against because of course the microphone will pick that up. So go and grab yourself a pair of monitoring headphones to make sure that you can do things nice and precisely. We've now got to the important part of recording the saxophone, but hold on there. Before you do that, we do need to touch on something extremely important, and that is microphone positioning. To enable you to get the microphone in a the right position, you do need to have a good microphone stand that you can have here. Um, it's not best practice to try and hold your own microphone while you're playing. Or alternatively, if you do have a volunteer holding it for you, that's not going to be sounding great either. Um, so stick with the traditional microphone stand. So I'm going to just get clipped on here and we will see. You can see the bell of the saxophone is around seven to eight inches away from the microphone, um, which in my opinion is probably a nice sweet spot. Um, but you can change the tone of your saxophone by where the microphone sits. Now we've always said to you, the majority of the tone does come from your mouthpiece and reed and ligature setup. So furthermore to that, you can change the sound once again with where the microphone sits. So where it is, is let's say that's the middle. If we start bringing it closer, we're going to start making use of something called the proximity effect. And what that will do is start introducing frequencies from the actual, the, the source sound, like direct frequencies, which can be good or can be bad. Another option for you is to move this away. This is generally what we do um, when we're recording on the saxophone. So you get a bit of a, a better idea of what the saxophone sounds like when it's in a room setting. Be wary though, if you are based or living or recording, say, close to a busy main road, you probably would not benefit from having your microphone further away like this because you will start to introduce excess bleed or ambient noises around the instrument. So if that is you, bring that microphone a little bit closer to get that direct sound and stop picking up, I don't know, an ambulance or a fire truck going by. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll give you an example of the difference in tonalities from just moving the position of the microphone. Earlier on in the video, I said I was going to explore some alternative options for you, whether that's going to be uh, something cheaper or something quick and easy to use just to get you started recording your sax. So here we've got a microphone that plugs straight into your mobile device via the auxiliary ports. And this one is a Rode Video Micro. It's not specifically used uh, for the saxophone, but it will give you better audio quality whilst on your recording and kind of set you apart from the rest that are using kind of the, the, the iPhone camera or your Samsung camera, whatever. Here, we have, a, we have a portable recording device. Um, this is brilliant because it's got a microphone and an audio interface built, in, built into one. So when we were talking about that transfer of analog to digital, this is all taking place in here. And what you would do is record in here and it comes out through this memory card. And then of course you can put it into any other device, whether it's going to be on your computer or any other software. So you would upload it from here. Um, so yeah, I think best thing to do is see how these things sound. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed learning to record the saxophone with me today. I just want to stress that it is a bit of a journey recording the sax. It's not something that's going to be the highest quality mesmerizing recording when you first start things. Um, there is going to be a bit of a trial and error, especially with the microphone placement and the effects you do apply to your sound. Um, but yeah, 
we we want to let you know that it's a now is a fantastic time to get into recording the saxophone. When uh, myself and Jamie started recording, kind of I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, things were so expensive. Um, I remember actually one Christmas when I got an, a new interface and it was going into a really old PC. Um, it must have taken me about three and a half hours just to make the uh, the sound on the speakers work. Um, maybe that was my fault, but. All I'm trying to say is nowadays is kind of plug and play or play, plug and record and you're good to go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and follow us on your TikToks and your Instagram at sax.co.uk. See you on the next one.